Welcome to Girl Talk. I'm Regina Ayers. And I'm Carol Voison. And Girl Talk is a lively discussion of the opportunities, challenges, and successes of women in their daily lives. We interview women living in the Rogue Valley who are making a difference in their communities. Today we're talking with women who are activists in our community. Each has a different focus as their community, in their community, but uh, being an activist is a common thread that runs through their lives. Carol, could you introduce our guests today? I would love to. Kathy Conway and Louise Chalquette um, are our guests, and obviously you can tell from their orange t-shirts that they have a connection to a group. So Kathy, would you start us out and introduce yourself, and then we'll go to Louise. Uh, my name is Kathy Conway, and I'm co-facilitator of Southern Oregon Climate Action Now, commonly known as SOCAN. Um, I grew up in Oregon, uh, left for about 30 years, and when I retired, uh, returned to Southern Oregon uh, in 2010, and I'm very glad to be back in the state. Louise. I'm Louise Shawkat, and I'm an activist with SOCAN. And um, I spent about 40 years in Louisville, Kentucky. Ooh, Louisville. I didn't know that. Uh huh. I did. I forgot that. And um, I, uh, I was a nurse, and um, I've been here for about nine, nine and a half years. Mm -hmm. And I moved here because my daughter lives here with her family. And that's it. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Aren't you glad you're not in Kentucky? <laughs> Well, a lot of people move away because of you-know-who. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'd like to start us out by trying to give some definition to what an activist is. And it's, well, I mean, we're women, so I think we bring a particular slant to activism. Maybe we don't. That's different for men. But what is an activist to you, Louise? I think an activist is somebody that cares about something significant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and does some, something about it does or tries something, something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. steps up to the plate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you give an example in your own life? I read your letters to the editor every other week. So oh, yeah. <laughs> so month, <laughs> month, month. Monthly. That's all you can yeah. have is right, monthly. Right, right, okay. right, right, right. Um, you're at city council all the time. Well, I am there a lot. You yes. are? Yes. I see you there. Yeah. And um, Conservation Commission. Yes. Transportation Commission. Oh, you go to the Transportation Commission, too? When I can. Not as often as the others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. Are you a member of any of the commissions? Or you no. just attend? Okay. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. She's mm -mm. an activist. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. You have, you have to be a little bit on the outside in order to be an activist. Yeah, if you're a member, you can't be an activist. I know that. Yes. Can you get in trouble. Yes, <laughs> you do. <laughs> Big trouble. Well, we didn't talk ahead of time, but we're pretty much on the same track. I, I think an activist is a person who takes action uh, on something that's important to them. Mm -hmm. And in my definition, it could be action in a lot of different ways. You know, it could be at the city council uh, making statements. It could be writing letters. Um, it just depends on the person mm -hmm. and what they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. uh, and but they're taking action in, of some form. Mm -hmm. So um, you're both involved in climate change. What values, personal values, do you hold that that motivate you? to be so involved in confronting climate change, as it says on your t-shirts? Well, I, I think 
have what a, do you value that, that brings you to actually act? Well, the things, so I value um, working with other people. Mm. To me, mm -hmm. that's really important, is being uh, together, supporting others. Mm -hmm. um, so, in so can we do get that because, mm -hmm. you know, we're a group that, that works with a variety, on a variety of issues. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the importance of, of being together with others, and as you look at a lot of your activism, it's always groups. Well, a lot of it's groups. You have leaders, but a lot of it's groups that make a difference. Right. And so, to me, that's that's a really important part of it. Um, I, for me, it's a chance to use my organizational skills mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not just sit home doing nothing. And mm -hmm. A lot of people, after retirement or when you retire, you're worried about what you're going to do. Well, it didn't take too long to get pretty involved <laughs> um, right. and and use my skills and feel good about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I think a lot of people uh, in activism. Um, do feel good that they're making a contribution mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm. And there's a common cause there yes. that brings that group, particular group, together. And for you guys, uh, it's the environment, yeah. Right, and then you look at all the different aspects of that. Mm -hmm. It's it's the, uh, you know, how some people suffer so much and mm -hmm. aren't able to be activists. They're just mm -hmm. able to right. survive. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes an important part for me is helping others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I look at it uh, as um, an intergenerational thing, and um, I am concerned, or I'm quite sad, really, about what I see the future hold mm -hmm. for um, children that are born today. Mm -hmm. Also, I look at how other countries, the common people are suffering oh, yeah. from floods, food deprivation, all of these tragedies, and I don't think that the United States is going to escape from that at all. You don't. No. Well, no. It, it, it really? already is affecting yes people. Right. You know the yes. floods that happen in the Midwest and right. Texas. Those right. hurricanes. People have not recovered from those. No. People without means. Right. right, and that's the important part: is mm -hmm. people who can't do things for themselves don't right. have the resources, whatever those are, mm -hmm. um, and then caring about um, helping them. And I think Louise, with her background in nursing and, mm -hmm. and me with mine in education, we're concerned about helping others. That's just part of our being. Mm -hmm. That's why we chose the fields, mm -hmm. um, and it's something that we really care about. And the other thing, I, I don't understand why People can't say, I have enough money and I have mm -hmm. to have more. Mm. I, it, I just, why? It just makes such a horrible imbalance. Mm -hmm. And to continue using fossil fuels and making money and using more. And so I understand that uh, the fossil fuel industry is losing revenue. It and, is? And, well, that's not a good thing because they've decided that well, let's increase our plastic uh, manufacturing of plastic, and they're going to make a worldwide demand for plastic goods. So, well, that's not good. No, no, it's not good. So, who is, who is? I, I don't. I hate to use this word, but I'm going to. Who is, and especially with regard to climate change, who is the enemy? Who is it that is failing? to join in this effort to at least contain climate change? Who's failing in doing that? Is it the corporations? Is it the people in a small town who just refuse to ride the bus or walk or ride their bike like you do all the time? Um, what, what is it that, who is it? Because it's us. Who is it that's, that's making this world so bad for the next generation, where we know there's going to be a huge change in lifestyle? Well, there doesn't seem to be a force that's marshalling. And you talk about the Marshall Plan, mm -hmm. and how they decided that this is what we're going to do, and they did it. Uh -huh. Well, there's nobody 
yeah. that has the ability to stand up and say, this is what we need to do, and let's, mm -hmm. let's just run with this ball and mm -hmm. do it. Just, mm -hmm. just do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that some people are trying to do that, but there's a lot of, in the U.S., there's opposition. And so my response to your question would be it's people associated with fossil fuels. Mm. So for many years, we were able to get oil and gas in coal. and coal inexpensively and then use it. And then as those easy supplies were exhausted, mm -hmm. we had to do other things like fracking mm. to get to it. And so it's not as cost effective. But people who are tied to the industry don't want to give up on what they have. So we know that we cannot afford to take any more of the fossil fuels out of the ground and keep our greenhouse gas low enough to, to continue on. But the people who are fighting it are, are those who are in the industry and those who support the industry. We get into people with a lot of money. And so where other countries did not have a campaign to make it seem like everything was okay in the United States, mm -hmm. we did. So we have a lot of people who don't understand that we can't afford to take more fossil fuels out of the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's part of our activism is the education and mm -hmm. the understanding mm -hmm. um, for people who are so busy with their daily life that they don't have time to go and read the research and mm -hmm. what they see or what they hear is put up by people trying to um, not give a clear picture of how, how serious it is. Mm -hmm. I think an example of the they are the subsidies that are still provided. Oh, to the by the federal fuel. government too. Yes. Oh yes. my gosh. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So the whole system is set. Um, with the fossil fuel companies being uh, the ones that are getting the money, mm -hmm. whether it's the, the owners or the managers or the, the banks or the stockholders right. yeah. or the legislators that do things then that support them. Mm -hmm. um, or receive donations right. for their campaigns. So is it greed? Right. You're talking about, in a lot of ways, greed there, that we're each thinking about what we're going to get from supporting the fossil fuel industry. So whether it's it's a stockholder because you have a portfolio that has stocks in it, you wanna see your 401k rise, mm -hmm. if you're lucky to have a 401k. Right. Um, and so, you know, that, um, but I think we all are responsible at some level. You know, you're doing a lot of work to, to contain this at the local level, but, you know, I feel, you know, we all try to recycle and we all try to do the right thing. But, you know, every now and then, you know, I realize that I'm, you know, I'm part of the problem. And, um, you know, we're all part of the problem because we've accepted this lifestyle uh, that we've gotten used to. Yeah. I think um, something that a person might consider is taking the Master Climate Protector course because it, um, out of that course you find out what your carbon footprint is mm -hmm. and you like doing something to reduce your own but by taking the course you find other ways that you can reduce your own carbon footprint mm -hmm. and make a difference mm -hmm. but every bit helps because mm -hmm. it spreads out mm -hmm. so here's a question for you if we need to reduce our carbon footprint all over the world. Mm -hmm. And we start doing that. What, what is your vision of or for bettering the world? What, what would, what's your vision that would make this world the kind of world we need to be in order to, well, survive? survive? Well, my vision includes um, a population that's looking forward, not backwards. Okay, we've, we've. I don't know what that means. We've been dependent on fossil fuels and we have things that we like mm -hmm. and we want to keep them. And so that's comfortable. Well, to switch that around to looking forward to how it could be differently, different. Mm -hmm. So um, 
you know, Louise rides her bike, yep. but not everybody does. But having a, a community where everybody could easily ride their bike. Mm -hmm. um, and so I say, well, I don't have time for that. That's looking backwards. Right. Mm -hmm. Rather than looking forwards, if I ride my bike, I don't need to do my workouts. You know, I feel better about life. I'm more productive. So we need to switch the way people look at things. Mm -hmm. um, and we have the technology we need. I know, I know. And we're back to the subsidies. Political will. And we, and we need the political will. will. We yes. have the, if we change the subsidies where they're going, then we can develop the things that we have the technology to develop. Yeah, like putting those subsidies into solar, wind, electric, mm -hmm. um, whatever, planes, um, boats, whatever, mm -hmm. um, instead of instead of the fossil fuel. But how are we going to do that? How 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 are you going to get <clears throat> as activists? How are you going to convince? And this is a part of bettering the world. How are you going to get people to think that their world will be better if they stop using fossil fuel? That's the education part. Okay. That's what we're about, is helping people understand. Okay. And, and like Louise said, with the Master Climate Protector, so it's a 10-week course, so you get information about what's happening, why we need to change it. Is that drawdown? Do. No, it's different than drawdown. Oh, okay. Uh, Pachamama Alliance uh, coordinates the drawdown, okay. and so can has Master Climate Protector. Okay. We incorporate drawdown okay. in it, but it's not the total. Package. Okay, and where can people find out more about this? Um, Socan.eco on the web. Eco.eco on yeah, the web. Yeah, we're a, one okay. of the eco groups um, Excellent. on the web. And then there are projects are there, and Master Climate Protector is one of them. Nice. And Louise is an instructor, and I'm an instructor, and there are five of us. We offer it once a year. Um, Only once a year? Well, we only have so many hours in our days. Oh, okay. <laughs> it takes a lot of energy. When is the next? Um, February 10th, 2020. February 10th. coming up. That's yes, good. For how long? It's, it's 10 weeks. 10 weeks? Two, uh, three hours a night, um, every Monday night. Every Monday night, three in hours. Method, in Medford. In Medford. At RCC. Okay. Oh, nice. All right. Nice. Starting yeah. February 10th. 10th. Monday, February 10th. And you have to sign up for it. Yes, and it costs $100. What is it? $100. Oh. But we have scholarships okay. because we have people who can't attend and right. know how important it is. So they right. donate money to help people. So oh, they excellent. You so just we have can to do apply. that. Okay. You just have to apply. Or if somebody's okay. interested and they can't go, they can always f put funding in for a scholarship. Okay. But that's that's really the start is the education. Right. Right. That's and very good. We're doing that in a lot of ways, but helping people understand. Right. What about the schools? Oh. Is it happening there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I think we, we've got a video, don't we? Don't is it we? 10 minutes? Yes, it is. Ooh, we, we need to watch video. So, yeah, we're going to watch this video, ladies, and we have a question for you afterwards. Okay. <laughs> Thunder strikes and picket sides. A dangerous swimmer needs but a bit of sweet victory. It's dangerous to stand alone. Dangerous to say your body is your own. Dangerous to break from tyranny. Well behaved women don't make history. How dangerous are you willing to be? You know, for more than a thousand years, holding the show, they women had it better here. They were equals, held the land, chose chiefs as mothers of the clan. And these dangerous women gave the life to Eve's sin. Seneca Falls, 1848, Western woman to put an end to her subjugated state. Coalitions changed.
remember their names while others retreated. They remain steadfast, always to the claim that the vote alone is not enough to change. No matter what the danger, it's dangerous to break from tyranny. Well behaved women don't make history. The vote. So I have a question for our guests. Are you dangerous women? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, I'm we, yeah, well, I could say that if, if a woman is defined as someone that's um, consistent and persistent and shows up and voices out, yeah. Oh, you're a dangerous woman. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well. I don't really put dangerous on descriptors for myself. I've spent most of my life being a very quiet person and in the background, so uh -huh. I don't think of myself as dangerous. Um, but I guess there's the kind of two groups. One is the group I work with, and I don't think I would want to be considered dangerous to them because I really value being collaborative and mm -hmm. working with others. But I guess if someone <coughs> owns a gas company and um, they see what we're doing as, as maybe going against their way of life, they might consider us dangerous. And so mm -hmm. from that perspective, I guess I would want to be dangerous because mm -hmm. I really think that needs to change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Good. it's a badge of honor. It, it could be a badge of a honor. A badge yes. of honor. Right. Yes. So can either one of you um, uh, tell us what nourishes you when things get kind of difficult. You know, since I started riding my bike a lot, mm -hmm. I find it very nourishing. And I never gave uh, Lithia Park the salute that it deserves, mm -hmm. but I ride in Lithia Park and I just think it's just a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And riding the bike is very freeing. But it's gardening oh, and messing course. around. That yeah, really yard. helps. Yes. yes. Oh, your, your yard's yard. incredible. Yeah. 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 That's. Also, uh, friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. being with them. Mm -hmm. Hey, can I talk to you? Yeah. Let's go out for lunch or have yeah. a cup of coffee together. Yeah. That makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. I guess we get along because we're pretty similar. <laughs> so for, for me, um, we, we live on 20 acres in the Applegate. Oh, my. And so um, just walking outside uh -huh. is Ooh. what I, I need to do when, mm -hmm. when things are going badly. Um, and that can be working in the, the garden or just walking around. Uh, um, we have a German shepherd, so taking mm -hmm. him for a walk mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. always, always good. Mm -hmm. Um, but people are important too. Um, friends, my husband, you know, they're, that are supportive and listen. Um, I think we all need somebody like that mm -hmm. um, because this is this is hard work. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, being yeah. out on the front lines on, mm -hmm. in whatever way you define that mm -hmm. is is difficult to do. Mm -hmm. um, so having people who are supportive is really important mm -hmm. That's to good. keep your commitment to the cause. Yeah, you know. and to clarify what you're what you're going right. for, because um, mm -hmm. you can you can get caught up into actions and lose sight of of where you're going. And uh, I would guess all activists have that happening that, mm -hmm. you know, things are criticism or you know things happen and they have to kind of regroup and mm -hmm. and redefine your focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need a what is it a devil's advocate or a someone who will really tell you, um, you know, what may be a different direction you may be able to take, but to critique what you're doing, 
Mm -hmm. I think that's terribly important for an activist to have one or two or three people in their community that can do that mm -hmm. and do it with um, um, a, a confidence that people will respect and, mm -hmm. and back off if they need to do that. Yeah. Well, we've run out of time, Carol. Oh. We have. Shoot. And we'd love, we really want to thank our guests for being here thank today. Thank you for inviting us. Louise thank you. and Kathy. Thank you very much. And um, Karen, do you want to thank uh, the crew? I do. Um, all volunteer crew. We couldn't have done this without them. Wanda, John, David, Gary, JC, and Norma all did the many, many things it takes to make this uh, production real and alive. So many thanks to you for being here. Thank you. So Girl Talk can be seen on Rogue Valley TV Channel 15 with Ashlyn Home Net or Channel 182 with Spectrum at 3 o'clock on Saturdays or 6.30 on Thursday evenings or on demand online at roguevalleytv.sou.edu. Click on the public access link at the top of the page and then search for Girl Talk. Girl Talk can also be heard live at noon on Sundays on KSKQ Community Radio at 98.5 FM in Ashland and 94.1 FM in Medford. We hope you learned something new today and that you will join us again soon. Thanks. Girl Talk, Girl Talk, what's better than Girl Talk, Girl Talk, Girl Talk. What's better than girl talk? Up before dawn, the coffee is gone. The kids are still sleeping, but not for long. Cook, she's a chauffeur, she's a worker bee. First in the door and last to leave. Girl talk, girl talk. What's better than girl talk? A chat with the ladies about their day. The ups and downs along the way. She's a cook, she's a chauffeur, she's a worker bee. First in the door and last to leave. Makes way less than the guy next door. She knows she's worth much more. Girl talk, girl talk. What's better than